What's happening, everybody? You tuned in to Off the Yard on Big Lens. I'm sitting in the truck, waiting to go to work. Oh, man, I need to make a video. So here it is. You know, I always talk about the do's and don'ts of prison. There's certain things that'll get you jammed up quick. I'm going to give you a little backstory. When you're in the county jail, you have all types of different individuals that's coming in and out. Dude that's in there for murder. Dude that's in there for robbery, rape. Sometimes you got dudes coming in on driving charges. DUIs and shit, you know what I mean? Dudes that are green, that got no business being in certain pods that they put them in. For instance, say you're a... You know, a young kid that gets a DUI. And when they pull you over, you're drunk. And you fight the cop. You don't know what you're doing. You're a dumbass drunk kid. But... They gonna put you... In a pod with a bunch of violent offenders. Seasoned, veteranos, convicts. Dudes that ain't never going home, maybe. Now, this is the story of such an individual. Got locked up. Little white dude. About 19, 20. Real skinny, frail kid, man. I was in the unit. I was waiting to go down the road. I'd already been sentenced. Well, the only thing I always talk about is getting on that poker table. But what can happen? The kid had a little bit of money coming in, and the guys knew it. So a lot of times they'll get together, and they'll all play against the kid, set him up, take his shit. Now he owes everybody. I told a young boy. Now, poker table. Gonna get you jammed up, son. Right? Well. He didn't listen. He kept on. He kept on. Well. There was this dude. Older dude, getting ready to go down the road. Had been down the road numerous times. Was notorious for putting it in them boys. And he loved little white boys. Scoped them out off the top. And I watched it go down, man. He got his homies. They got him on that poker table and ran that boy up. And although he had a little money coming in, he didn't have enough to cover what he owed. I remember him getting on the phone and asking his mom, please, I need some money. I need more money. You don't understand. Now, as a young man, I wonder what it must be like. You have to call your family. Explain to them why you need all this money. Well, his mom told him no. Matter of fact, she told him she was cutting him off altogether. That he had asked for too much and she felt like he was taking advantage of her. Well, we had just come off lockdown one day. After dinner. So it was evening. 6.30, 7 o'clock in the evening. And that's usually when a lot of dudes go and get their shower for the night. Go in there, take a shower. Get yourself together. Maybe watch a show out in the day room. Because in the jail, you don't have TVs. You got radios. 
And then you go on and just go on to bed. I seen a young boy come out, man, at the count. I was down there chilling with a couple of my buddies. <clears throat> and uh, the old dude that I was telling you about, the seasoned convict, he saw him come out too. Now, in the county jail, the COs sit in the pod. So they got like this little desk in, they, or in the jail I was in. They had this little desk area, man, like a little en enclosure. They would sit in there and watch the pod. Well, the CO has to do a round. So when he went up the stairs to the top tier to make his round, that's when the veteran made his move. He darted towards the shower where the young boy was in, in there washing himself. Opened the curtain and got into the little, and the, these are little stand-up stalls. They're not big. And this kid, I mean, this this man was every bit 240 pounds. Huge, big cock diesel guy. And this little white boy was in trouble. I could hear the scuffling and the, and the whispering. He's probably whispering in his ear. You know, you say nothing of kill you. Just real quick, I want you to imagine, if you're a young individual right now, what you would really do. A lot of people say, oh man, it ain't gonna happen to me. Oh, it ain't gonna happen to you? I've seen a lot of, it ain't gonna happen to me's in prison. That little boy didn't stand a chance. He had no way of getting out of that stall, and he had no option but to give up the Junies. That's what they call them, the Junie Cakes. You could hear the first initial scream, and you knew what was going down. It lasted about Two minutes, three minutes. The CEO had to go up and go around across the pod, the tier. He had his buddies watching out for him. And when he was done, he comes out of the stall covered in water. Blood on him. Blood on his leg area. Blood on his boxers. He made his way up to his cell. That must have been a horrific thing for that little young boy. As he comes out, everybody knew what had happened to him. He kind of hangs his head low. And has to walk up those stairs. With his ass torn. In front of a whole room of men. But here's the situation. He didn't just owe him. He owed that whole table. And there comes a time when race races stick together and, you know, white boys will, you know, look out for each other. But I told that boy, don't get on that poker table. Everybody told that boy, don't get on that poker table. And he had, they let him get up a little bit. And that's how they get you. They let you get up a little bit. You think you're winning. He was all cocky talking smack. For the next couple weeks, that boy took miles, miles of dick over a poker deck. Each one of those men had their turn with him. And it's sickening to watch. Sickening to see. It breaks your heart in ways and it makes you feel very like just disgusted, not only what's going on, but the whole environment, the whole situation that you're in. The boy finally checked in, but there's no point checking in usually because you're just going to go somewhere else and you're gonna get, it's going to follow you. You can't just, people think that you can just check into the hole and then it's over. That's not how it works. <laughs> Your debt follows you. That reputation follows you. No matter where that boy went, they knew what had happened to him. And to this day, he has to wake up every day knowing what happened to him. And who knows? 
When you're in a situation like that, what if one of those guys has HIV? What if one of those guys has hep C? You don't know. All over you not listening and doing what you want to do. So as I'm sitting here today, I'm reminded of this. And I think to myself how lucky I am and how fortunate I am to be out of prison still, going on almost four years. This is a statistic that is rarely achieved. I don't have to be in those situations where I feel disgusted and I feel um, just that weird, you know, just where am I? What is this? Why are they doing that? Why do they, why is this happening? People always talk about on these channels how they want to hear about this type of stuff. Well, let me explain something to you. There's nothing more wor more disgusting or, 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 or more sickening than hearing and seeing some little 18, 19 year old kid getting his asshole reamed out. There's nothing good about that. It changes you. And you never really forget not only what you saw, but the sounds of it, how you, what you heard. Sometimes, you know, be the middle of the night. I remember going to Southampton receiving years ago, like 98, 99. I went down to Southampton receiving. Southampton was an old prison. It's closed now. But... <laughs> but the receiving was three wings, A, B, and C, right? And it was locked down most. It was like 23-hour lockdown because you just didn't receive for a month. But the same situation would happen. They put some frail little kid. It ain't just white boys, man. It was everybody. They put some frail little kid in a cell with somebody who is on that type of time, man. And you'd hear in the middle of the night when they fucking when they made their move. Oh, what are you what are you doing? Hey, help, help! And you hear muffle. When they don't cover their mouth or they unstuck something in their mouth or they done put a knife to their throat. And that's usually Mr. That ain't going to happen to me. That wouldn't happen to me. It can happen. That's a reality of the penitentiary, man. And you, you just sit there and think it's going to be like the movies where... You're going to jet lead your way out of it, but it's not going to be like that. There are rules in prison that you should follow if you find yourself in that situation. And if you do find yourself in that situation, God forbid... If somebody gives you a jewel, if uh, an older cat gives you advice, listen, adhere to it. Heed those words. And it's the same as out here. Heed those words, man. But the one thing you got to do is to say sucker free. Keep your head up, everybody. Stay blessed. Stay positive. I'm going to get my ass to work. It's another free day out here in the world, man.
Y'all stay up.